Good evening, I'm Professor Michael, and you're watching Kini News, the show that brings you today's biggest stories. As Singapore and Malaysia engage in talks on how they can reopen the border, a critic's comment has caught the attention of Minister Hishamuddin Hussein. Former Ambassador at Large and Policy Advisor to Singapore's Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Bilahari Kausikan, recently reacted to a post on social media by saying Singapore was right in not wanting to reopen its borders without restrictions or tests, as a certain country will export their problems to Singapore. When Foreign Affairs Minister Hishamuddin Hussein was asked to respond to Bilahari's statement at a press conference today, this is what he said. Um, on the issue of um, that comment, I don't know who he is. And um, what is more important is my discussion with the Foreign Minister of Singapore, um, Vivian. And I, I was in, um, in discussion with him um, for quite some time in the last few days. In fact, yesterday we had a video conferencing together with our KSU and our PermSec. Bilahari's comment was made as he shared an article published by Free Malaysia Today. The report quoted Singapore's Foreign Affairs Minister, Vivian Balakrishnan, as saying that he did not feel it was possible to open the borders with no restrictions or tests. Speaking to reporters today, Hisham said both countries are in talks to ensure a smooth process. And what's important is to take step-by-step -step approach to ensure the, re re the reopening of uh, relations and movements of our people um, is done smoothly, safely, and uh, it will benefit us in all sectors. Um, if we cannot do it with our immediate neighbour, Singapore, I think it will be a hard push for us to start looking at the other five plus one countries, which include Singapore, sorry, the other five countries that we are now trying to navigate this green bubble. Hisham also noted that despite thorough planning by relevant authorities, it will be impossible to satisfy all the critics. Um, of course, there will be people uh, who will look at it uh, negatively, but they're not involved in the negotiations. They don't know what I'm discussing with the Foreign Minister of uh, Singapore. So they can say what they, what they like, lah. but as long as we can assure the Malaysian and the Singaporean people that um, all the necessary safeguards are being taken into account and that we are responsible in the way we conduct these relations and the opening up, they can, they can well, I don't want to say more. <laughs> <laughs> But to me, I don't know who he is anyway. The green bubble Hisham was referring to is an initiative between select ASEAN countries to boost economic activities in the region and to potentially ease travel restrictions between ASEAN member nations. Malaysia will allow medical tourists. However, it's restricted to those most in need of treatment. But first, let's take a look at the country's latest COVID-19 situation. Malaysia today reported four new COVID-19 cases, with three of those being imported cases. The remaining locally transmitted cases involved a Malaysian in Johor. As for recoveries, 40 people were discharged today, bringing the total number of recoveries to 8,271. The Health Ministry in a statement today said this puts the total number of active cases at 208. Meanwhile, Senior Minister Isma Sabri Yaakob said in a separate statement today that only medical tourists in critical condition or with serious illnesses would be allowed to enter the country to undergo treatment under the Recovery Movement Control Order. He added that for Phase 1A, only medical evacuation cases would be allowed. For Phase 1B, permission is given to healthcare travellers who have serious illnesses such as heart-related complications or cancer. They would have to obtain an appointment letter from the Malaysian Health Tourism Council first before entering the country. Other than making an appointment, medical tourists would have to undergo COVID-19 tests three days before entering the country and complete the pre-entry conditions, such as paying the medical costs and downloading the MySajatra app. Isma said the permission is only granted for air travel. Ahmad Mazlan was in full campaign mode in Chini this week, where he unleashed a flurry of punches at Pakatan Harapan, but here's the thing, Harapan isn't even contesting in Chini. Speaking at a campaign event in Chini, AMNO Secretary General Ahmad Mazlan recalled how things appeared to him when Pakatan Harapan was in power. In his talk, Ahmad did not paint a pretty picture of Harapan's 22-month-long reign to the folks who will be voting in the by-election on July 4th. According to Ahmad, the biggest victim of Harapan's cruelty was none other than former Prime Minister Najib Abdul Razak. 
Zaman yang tiada harapan pada ketika itu Walaupun mereka kata mereka kerajaan pakatan harapan Tapi tak ada harapan Dan zaman itu kezaliman demi kezaliman mereka lakukan Datuk Najib diseret ke mahkamah Datuk Sri Rosmah diseret ke mahkamah Tidak ada satu pertuduhan sebanyak itu kepada rakyat Malaysia Atau mungkin dalam dunia 87 tuduhan kepada Presiden UMNO Diseret ke mahkamah Tak cukup satu tuduhan Dua tak cukup 87 dikenakan Ahmad also told the audience to recall how things were under Pakatan Harapan Siapa kepala zalimnya? Dr. Mahathir Muhammad yang maha zalim itu Dia cakap puas terang Dia tunjuk sekali kat situ Dia lah kepala zalim tau kan Bukan kami-kami ni aja, ada ramai lagi yang diheret ke mahkamah. Tuan-tuan perempuan, <coughs> uh, kita kembali kepada 22 bulan itu. Jangan lupa, jangan dipadam ingatan-ingatan 22 bulan itu. Lupa kita scroll balik. Paparan-paparan uh, Facebook, paparan-paparan bagaimana uh, selang tiga hari ada isu. Selang tiga hari ada isu. Daripada isu kekanda adinda. <laughs> Sampailah isu yang besar-besar penjualan harta secara borong. The Chini State by-election is a three-cornered fight between BN candidate Muhammad Sharim Mat Zain and two independent candidates, namely Tengku Zainal Hisham Tengku Hussein and Muhammad Shukri Muhammad Ramli. The by-election is being held following the death of incumbent assembly person Abu Bakar Harun. In the last general election, Abu Bakar retained the seat with a 4,622 vote majority. Former Prime Minister Dr. Mahathir Muhammad has announced his personal support for independent candidate Tengku Zainal. An AMNO leader has called on Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yassin to follow Singapore's footsteps in holding a general election. Inspired by Singapore's move to hold a general election this year, AMNO Deputy President Muhammad Hassan called on Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yassin to do the same. Muhammad, the highest-ranking AMNO leader so far in favour of SNAP polls, said the move was especially necessary because the federal government was not stable. Writing on Facebook, Muhammad said since independence, Malaysia has never seen such instability politically. He added that the current situation made it very difficult for the government to approve critical bills including supply bills to revive the economy. Muhyiddin is believed to command the support of slightly over half of the country's 222 MPs, but his support had never been tested in the day one rakyat. On May 18th, Muhyiddin called for a one-day parliament session just to fulfil constitutional requirements. No bills were voted on in that sitting. Parliament is set to reconvene on July 13th. Muhammad elaborated that the country cannot be in a situation where the government was at risk of collapse every few months and only a government with a comfortable majority of parliamentary seats could face the current challenges. After two weeks, the Indian tourist who died after contracting COVID-19 at an immigration detention centre has been laid to rest. Ziauddin Kadar Mazdan, the Indian tourist who died in the Immigration Department's detention depot in Bukit Jalil, was buried at a cemetery in Salayang on Tuesday morning. This was confirmed by Ziauddin's friend Uthman Mansur to Malaysia Kini. Uthman said this was after a medical official contacted him to come to the hospital to claim the remains. Ziaudin's family residing in Chennai had entrusted Othman to arrange the funeral in Malaysia. However, Othman had to wait two weeks to claim the remains, as Ziaudin was confirmed dead on June 12. According to Health Ministry Director General Dr. Norasham Abdullah, the process to claim the body took some time, pending a lab report. So, as I mentioned earlier, our post-mortem report shows that there's consolidation of the lungs. So, they, she, he might have infection, uh, whether it's a new infection or chronic infection, there's a, uh, that still uh, uh, needs to be certain. Uh, but, but definitely, she, uh, the person has infection of the lung. But uh, again, because he also has other comorbidities, uh, diabetes, hypertension, etc. So, I think that is per perhaps the cause of death. Uh, but we are also waiting for other uh, swab that we uh, do for other viruses or even other bacteria. So uh, until we have the full report, uh, so far we, we do not have the full report yet because uh, 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 the investigation is still being, uh, being done. Ziaudin was treated as an undocumented migrant after his social visit pass expired during the movement control order period. He was supposed to return to Chennai on March 20th. He was picked up in a raid at Malayan Mansion in Kuala Lumpur on May 8th 
and sent to the Bukit Jalil Immigration Detention Depot, where he later contracted COVID-19. Coming up next, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson faces stiff criticism from the opposition. UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson has dismissed criticism on local lockdowns and the NHS tracing app. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson dismissed criticism on Wednesday of his government's plans to implement local lockdowns if there are flare-ups of the novel coronavirus and of an app to trace the spread of the virus. At Prime Minister's questions in Parliament, the opposition Labour leader, Keir Starmer, suggested both systems were not yet ready before England eases its coronavirus lockdown from July 4th. Welcome to the Leader of the Opposition, Right Honourable Keir Starmer. Yeah. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And the real concern amongst council leaders is that they don't have the powers or guidance to implement lockdowns quickly if needed. The Conservative leader of Oxfordshire Council said, I'd be interested for central government to confirm what is meant by local lockdown, including clear guidance as to those powers and what's expected of us. Can the, can the Prime Minister tell us when local authorities will get the guidance that they need? Uh, Mr Speaker, we have a very effective cluster busting operation uh, which is designed to ensure that we keep those outbreaks under control. Local councils understand uh, how to do it with the local resilience forums backed up by the Joint uh, Biosecurity Centre. I'm not going to pretend to him or to the House that this thing is beaten or that the virus has gone away. A spokesperson for Stammer pointed to Germany, which has had a large number of people downloading its apps, and a number of countries which are far ahead in terms of developing their apps, such as Singapore and South Korea. A test and trace program is key to reopening the country, but has been dogged by problems. A smartphone COVID-19 test and trace app developed by the National Health Service was initially expected to be rolled out nationwide in May, but did not materialise. Figures released last week of England's test and trace showed that while over 85,000 people who were tested positive for the new coronavirus had been reached in the first two weeks, over 25% of positive cases could not be reached. The coronavirus pandemic has caused wider and deeper damage to economic activity than first thought. The pandemic is pummeling economic growth more than the IMF had initially thought. The International Monetary Fund on Wednesday slashed its 2020 global output forecast to minus 4.9%. That's much deeper than the 3% shrinkage it had predicted just two months ago. Economies have begun to reopen, but the IMF said the combination of lockdowns and social distancing has hurt investment and consumption has disrupted supply. Particularly hard hit were the biggest economies. The IMF lowered its outlook for the US and Eurozone by more than two percentage points. But it was Latin American economies like Brazil, Mexico and Argentina that got hit with the biggest downgrades. The only major economy expected to grow? China. The country that was first to encounter the coronavirus began reopening in April and new infections have been minimal. Looking further ahead, the IMF also cut its global growth forecast for 2021 to 5.4% from 5.8% in its April outlook. But it warned that a major new outbreak could shrink that year's growth to a half percent. And that is all for me today. For more stories, you can go to kinitv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and Facebook for the latest news updates. I'll be back with more tomorrow, same time, same place. I'm Prasad Michael. Thank you for watching.